Hello. Um, I was just requested to test Dr. Webb's security space. I thought it would be a good idea to give it a try because I really like their live CD. Uh, really good for lots of different um, infections. And um, I wanted to see how they did in prevention because I'm very used to it as a removal tool. So it's a 54.5 megabyte installer. I'm going to start installing this. It's a 30 day trial. And it's an antivirus, anti spam, anti spyware, anti root kit. And I'm interested to see how it does against my 11 malware links. I just tested most of the links before dinner. And they seem to work. But after dinner, who knows? So we'll have to see what happens. They go up and down mighty quick. I was going to do Zone Alarm, but I uh, noticed that Zone Alarm, Extreme Security, needs one gigabyte of RAM with Windows XP, that's its requirements, and I can't assign my virtual machine one gigabyte of RAM and have my computer work properly. I only have two gigabytes of RAM and I use about 800 or so just to run the computer. So, so we'll continue installing this. So this is cool. They make you confirm that no other antivirus software is installed in the computer. One of the biggest mistakes that people can make is that they will install more than one antivirus. And that can merely be a problem. Uh, let's see. We'll do this for a demonstration key file. Uh, let's just see what's here. Anti-spam scanner update. Uh, they call it spider. That makes sense with this. So I'm going to do the default installation because I don't feel like editing anything. And I don't feel like boring you any further because it's merely the installation process. So when this is through, I will turn this video back on and I'll take a look at um, the interface and the settings. So I'll be right back. So I got to this point in the installation and it tells you you need a license key file and I want to obtain a demo key file. Um, so I'm just gonna punch in my uh, info and we'll be right back. So now downloaded a key file and it stored the key file to this directory here. So pretty straightforward, it asks you to update. You can configure update settings if you wanted, but I'm not going to bother. And just because this update might take a little amount of time, I might pause the video because I only have so much time. Oh, never mind, it's done. What do you, what do you know? So it's going to update the components. Okay, 
it's checking. And so now it looks like it's starting up. Dr. Webb. And we'll see what happens. I like the installers that don't make you restart your computer. It's much easier that way. But it's not a real bug if they do. It seems to be slightly non-responding. Nope, here we go. So it automatically wants to scan the computer. So, as part of its job, I guess it scans the computer so that it knows nothing will really be in the way. Um, I might stop because I know this is a clean computer. Okay. And yes, I must restart the computer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Great. Everything's booting back up here. And Dr. Webb should be loading. We hope. So I see its processes here. Ah, here we go. So it has many different guards. And you can copy to the clipboard so that people can see what versions you have going and everything. So let's take a look. There's no real main interface to this program. So I just have to go over this and different menus and settings. So all that stuff is good. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. There's nothing really for me to configure there. Spider gate. So it's a parental controls thing. That's what it is. Or it's a firewall. And then, so there's nothing much for me to edit here. Um, everything looks all set. So I'm going to stop the video, and we're going to take a look. Actually, just a quick look. Spider Mail is using 41 megabytes of memory, which is a lot. The rest seems to be lower on memory. And then... But it's not necessarily... It's medium heavy. But I'm going to stop the video and continue with the next one where we test some links.